Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so it's Friday afternoon here in Australia. The weekend is coming. Are we going to see a further correction and will that be the bottom over the weekend? Because again, traditionally most weekends we have a correction. It's almost every weekend. There's not too many weekends. With the, not so much a correction, but a pullback anyway or a retracement. There's a few different names you could call it. But generally, there's one that happens over the weekend. But again, maybe something has sort of changed this week and we've already sort of had it. And so over the weekend, it just spikes up. Me, I personally think, again, I think this is going down. I do think Bitcoin is going to get down to sort of 43-ish thousand dollars. Could be 44, could be 42, thereabouts. And yeah, I think that'll probably be the bottom. But look, I've been wrong before and I never offer financial advice. We'll just have to wait and see. This could be a long, slow, drawn-out thing, you know, like it was back in January. There was a sort of three-week sell-off, and we could see something like that, but we'll wait and see. All right, $1.4 trillion. So I think we're going to get down close to the $1 trillion mark once this is all sort of said and done. Now, I'm not saying exactly $1 trillion, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're about $1.1, maybe $1.2, and look, we could even go under $1 trillion market cap. That is completely possible, but... Again, we'll have to wait and see. BTC dominance the same, well, up a tiny bit. ETH dominance down a little bit, and gas price is still really high. All right, as we can see, there's a fair bit of red here. Things aren't looking too great. Uh, a lot of people are probably hurting a little bit, and particularly the people who, you know, just kind of FOMO'd in at that last minute and, yeah, bought the all-time highs. They really will be hurting at the moment. But hopefully they've done their research. All right, let's have a look. What's really pumped in 24 hours? Even better question, has anything pumped in 24 hours? Because I haven't checked this. I'm doing this live with you. Yes, we've had some things that have moved. Well, really one. So Nia, they've done pretty well. That's a pretty good pump, but they are still down over the last five days. Engine Coin hasn't been doing too bad. There's a lot of news about NFTs and stuff. So they've done all right. But look, two projects that really are in the green and only one of them with a pretty reasonable sort of pump. And then these ones here, they're just stable coins, so they're up a little bit. And then we can see that we're just going into the reds. All right, so let's have a look then. What's dumped and what was the worst, you know, that dumped in the top 100 at least? Ugh, ZK swaps and Phantom, of course. We were just talking about these the other day. You can't have those massive pumps without those sort of massive dumps. And yeah, ZK swaps, which I'm guessing came from outside the top 100. Not that it means that anything outside the top 100 is bad, but it's just that it's, you know, it generally hasn't got a lot of history behind it if it's pushing back into the top 100. Generally, when things fall out of the top 100, you quite often don't see them again. Things can pump into it a lot easier than them trying to get back into it once they've fallen out of it. It just generally means they're losing... Um, losing market momentum, losing favor with buyers and investors and things like that. So, I mean, look at Phantom. It's still up by an absolute country mile, though. So nearly 170% for the week, but it is having a retracement. And then, look, there's lots of other double-digit sort of losers here. Synthetics Network just continues to go down. So, yeah, there we go. I'm still keeping an eye on Synthetics Network. I haven't pulled the trigger and bought any more yet, uh, but I've got some money on the sideline. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm not in any rush. And if it literally bounces from here and I don't buy any more for $17, I'm not too worried. I bought a fair few, you know, what I consider a fair few more. Anyway, with the profits I made from other coins. Now, I did buy them at $24, so I could have bought them a whole lot less and got myself uh, a couple more extra. But look, they were bought with profits that I made from a whole stack of other coins anyway. So, you know, I haven't really lost any money in that sense. All right, let's go on. Let's have a look at the actual chart. So here's Bitcoin, and again, it is down. And I do see this playing out a little bit like this. I think it's probably going to play out over a, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or so. We'll just have to wait and see. I could be completely wrong. I've been wrong before. But really, this green line, I think, is going to be a great buying opportunity. So if Bitcoin somehow manages to get down around sort of 40000 I think that's going to be a pretty good buying opportunity. But we just need to be prepared. It could go lower. And I, uh, I don't have them here anymore, but I had the 100 and 200 day moving averages. They're quite lower. I really do think we're probably going to bounce before the 50 day moving average. But 
you know, time will tell. So we're just keeping an eye on keeping an eye on it at the moment. But it is an obvious downtrend, one hundred percent. We had that thing the other day where I thought maybe it's going to spike and break out here. No, nah, it just rolled over. All right, so let's get on to some stories, and there's some pretty good ones. So crypto leaders back MIT's four year and four year initiative to harden Bitcoin security. Crypto industry captains are throwing their support behind a long-term project from MIT's digital currency initiative to enhance Bitcoin security. The open source initiative has received support from a diverse group of crypto industry leaders, including Gemini's Camera and Tyler Winklevoss, MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor, Square CEO Jack Dorsey, and major European digital asset manager CoinShares. So MIT, I mean, you know, they are considered worldwide to be some pretty smart people uh, coming out of that university, college, whatever you want to call it. And there has been money donated by people uh, to these guys to do that as well. So this is pretty interesting. I mean, Bitcoin's already pretty secure, but you know, there is talk about these new quantum computers and things that might be able to come out and you know break the code and all the rest of it. So I don't think we should ever stop trying to harden Bitcoin security. So I do like the fact that people are getting into this and that shows that there's still interest in the space. Yes, we might be going through a bit of a correction, a bit of a retracement at the moment, but no one, well, I won't say no one, there's always gonna be some people who have, but you know, the true crypto heads, they haven't given up. They're not just exiting and taking their money and you know, won't be seen again until the next you know, bull market, because they probably still believe, like most of us, we're still in a bull market. We're just in the correction phase of a bull market. In a bear market, you really wouldn't see too much news like this, so I think we are still very bullish. Just my opinion. All right, so for all my Australian viewers, and I am Australian, so I'm pretty proud of this, but more Aussies invest in cryptocurrency than in gold and silver, says the survey. Uh, I'd definitely be one of them. I did have some gold and silver. I ended up just selling it. It just it was performing nowhere near as good as my cryptocurrencies. My gold actually went down. I must have bought right at the top around about $2,000. I was lucky though with the silver. I think I got it at 80 something cents, 70 something cents. Went up to about a dollar fifteen. So I did pretty good with that, but really they haven't been moving since. So I got out of that uh, and put that into cryptocurrencies. A survey of more than 2,000 Australian investors has found that cryptocurrency is a more popular investment than gold and silver but it still has a long way to go to catch up to shares. The poll conducted on behalf of BTC Markets over the month of February found that 12.6% of Aussies, Aussie investors, hold Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies compared to 12.1% who hold precious metals. However, the stock market is by far the preferred, uh, in option, uh, preferred option for investors, with 63% holding shares directly and 28% investing in their exchange-traded funds or managed funds. Property is also a popular investment with 25%, while 18% said they invested in collectibles. Australian crypto investors heavily favour Bitcoin and Ethereum, with 83.2% holding Bitcoin, 42% holding Ethereum, followed by Ripple with 28.5%, so still a lot of Ripple investors, Litecoin with 18%, and Bitcoin Cash with 12%. So... I'm pretty much full into most of that basket. I mean, I still have a little bit of Ripple. I just, again, I've told the story of why I sold it with the the lawsuit going on. I don't hold any Bitcoin cash though, and I do hold some Litecoin. So there you go. I guess I fall into that bracket. All right, this is a little bit sad. So, Central Bank of Nigeria governor defends decision to exclude crypto players, says the order is in the best interest of Nigerians. I'm not so sure about that. We'll continue to read. I'm already sceptic. No, I, was, I already have scepticism. You can obviously hear it. The governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin, oh, I'm going to butcher this, Emma Feely, has defended the Apex Bank's decision to exclude cryptocurrency transactions from the banking ecosystem. In his testimony before the Nigerian Senate, Emma Feely claimed that the February 5 directive is in the best interest of Nigerians. Immediately following the announcement of the CBN pro prohibition, Nigeria's regulated financial institutions began to sever ties with crypto traders and exchanges. However, following an outcry 
over the move, more supportive members of the Nigerian Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and other financial institutions requested Emifili uh, to brief the legislative body on the rationale behind the CBN prohibition. In justifying the move, the CBN governor told the Nigerian legislators that cryptocurrency is not legitimate money since it has not been issued by a central bank. Using this argument, Emma Feely then added, Cryptocurrency has no place in our monetary system at this time and cryptocurrency transactions should not be carried out through the Nigerian, Nigerian banking system. So this is really disappointing for uh, Nigerians, but there's something we need to sort of keep in mind that was said. Cryptocurrency has no place in our monetary system at this time. So it's just at this time. It absolutely will be in the future. There's no country that's going to get away away from cryptocurrency. It's the same as India, you know, looking to put all these kind of bans and things in. The rest of the world uh, is getting on board and they will follow suit. They will have no choice. Whatever countries put the bans in and try and ban it will be the ones that will be left behind because they can't get rid of cryptocurrencies and it'd just be nearly impossible to ban. They really would have almost no chance of doing it. I'm not saying none because maybe they come up with something that no one knows of yet, but the chances are so slim that it hasn't been able to you know, be banned yet and you know, outlawed and all the rest of it. And big business and that are just getting on board right now. And governments will, as the money continues to go up and they just, you can't deny gains. Yes, there's going to be heavy retracements, but they will get less and less as it gets adopted more and more. It is a safer way to transact with money. You know, the whole thing they talk about is, oh, too much crime can be done with it. It's so much easier to be tracked than with cash. It is, there's a ledger right there that shows you exactly how it's done. I understand what they're talking about, how it's not banked, backed by a bank, but that's really just more the stable coins that, that they really should be talking about. And yes, you know, you need to be careful. It's good that the Tether lawsuit is now done. You know, they're, they're at least as confident as they can be that it's, you know, backed one for one. And if people don't like Tether, then they'll just move to USDC or whatever, which is guaranteed to be back one for one by a dollar. So, yeah, a little bit sad for people in Nigeria. But again, it's just at this time it, that's going to change cryptocurrencies 100% will be part of their banking system in the future. Banks are already looking into how to use this to, you know, to make more profits and make things work easier without all the, the issues that they currently have with their system. All right, this is good and bad at the same time. Robinhood reports 6 million new crypto traders in 2021. In a bog, in a bog, <laughs> excuse me, in a blog post on February 26, that's today, titled Crypto Goes Mainstream, the retail trading app revealed that it had seen 6 million new customers on Robinhood Crypto so far this year. And it's early, it's February, we're not even through the second month. It is growing, it will continue to grow. So, you know, these retracements, you know, corrections, whatever you want to call them, they're short term, they're not long term, at least at the moment anyway. A bear market, different story, I don't think we're there yet. The number of new monthly consumers, customers, sorry, buying from its crypto platform in 2021 is 15 times the 2020 average. That tells you something. Now me personally, I wouldn't touch Robin Hood after the whole GameStop uh, you know, fiasco that happened. There and the fact that there was information that they were selling the information to the big traders and the big traders were just going against, you know, the small retail traders. So for me I wouldn't touch Robin Hood. If you couldn't pay me enough to touch Robin Hood, I, I will never touch it based on what they did with the whole Robin Hood thing. And again, the information that they were selling all their data to the the big firm so they could counter trade against the little guy. That is yeah, absolutely disgusting. But the upside is, you know, six million new people are getting into crypto and that's just in the last sort of month or two. So yes, corrections will come, but still super bullish. All right, so Anchorage, armed with banking charter, raises 80 million Series C. A raises 80 million in their Series C. The digital asset custody firm pulled in enough to practically start its own bank. 
and conveniently it already holds an OCC charter. So I did sp speak about this the other day, $80 million. They are doing well and, and they've been given the license that they could be a banking charter. So again, all this bearish kind of narrative that's happening out there, is this the kind of thing that happens in a bear market? I don't think so. I think this is what happens in a bull market. You'll know when it's a bear market because there'll just be there'll be basically no real good stories at all, and it'll just be oh so quiet. You won't hear anything about it. I mean, in saying that, the news has definitely got a little bit quieter when it comes to good news. But yeah, yeah, I personally don't believe it's over. That's my opinion. You got to make your own decision, and you know, I'm not here to try and influence you one way or the other. I just report on things that I find interesting and give my you know my insights but again I do have to say this it's never financial advice I'm not a financial advisor all right last story so this is this could be part of the reason why crypto uh, Bitcoin particularly because when Bitcoin dumps a lot of things dump that's just the way it is uh, and this could be why the market is having a bit of a retracement now this is posted today though so Global Crypto Investment Fund, or FD7 Ventures, to sell 750 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin to increase their Cardano and Polkadot holdings. So, scary on one side that 750 million dollars worth of Bitcoin is going to be sold. But hey, if you're in Cardano or Polkadot, you'd be pretty happy with this. Dubai-based FD7 Ventures, a global crypto investment fund with 1 billion under management announced today plans to sell off $750 million worth of their Bitcoin holdings over the next 30 days. So this, you know, if they're doing that, this means Bitcoin could be absolutely going down for about another month. I'm not saying this could do it all by itself, but if there's other things going on, maybe we're going to see some lower prices. All right, and so they are looking to increase their position in Cardano and Polkadot. The move will effectively sell off a majority of the company's Bitcoin holdings to purchase rising projects Cardano and Polkadot. According to the company, the increase in these altcoin holdings will better, served, will better serve the needs of the FD7 investors who are looking to diversify their portfolios in the growing cryptocurrency space. Aside from the fact that Bitcoin was first to market and society has given it meaning as a store of value i think bitcoin is actually pretty useless Oof, that's some big talk says uh prakash chand managing director at fd7 ventures projects such as cardano polka dot and ethereum are the foundation of the new internet and web 3.0 i do i do agree with that sort of last part but i don't think bitcoin is useless at all as a store of value i think it's going to be a great place uh, to put money but that's just my opinion and I think you know it already is being adopted by retail but yes I think other things are going to come along as well whether Bitcoin hangs around forever or not well I guess we'll wait and see it does have that first mover advantage and generally that first mover advantage kind of does last for a fair while it doesn't always last forever but geez I think Bitcoin's uh, again just starting to sort of build so we'll have to wait and see but that is super bullish news for anyone who's into cardano and polka dot and look i'm into both I, I like both the projects and the fact that they've got staking is even better and my worry is that ethereum gets left behind because of the gas fees and i've spoken about that before but hopefully that gets sorted and then ethereum can you know kind of hold its place i still believe cardano and polka dot will have a place uh, and won't just simply disappear that's my personal opinion all right, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Are you a holder of Cardano and Polkadot? And do you think the 750 million sell-off is going to push the Bitcoin price down some, which will still likely push Cardano and Polkadot down some? And that'll be quite interesting because they'll be selling off their Bitcoin and getting into something that's going down as well. Most likely. It all depends on how they do it. If they sort of sell all the Bitcoin first and then just dump one big sort of load of buy orders into Polkadot and Cardano, that could really affect the price. And I'm sure they've done a little bit of research into the best way to sort of go about that. Hence why they're going to sell off their Bitcoin over 30 days. They're not just going to try and dump it in one go because that will just really dump the price. And the first part of their sell order might, you know, get sold for a reasonable price, but the rest of it will just have really tanked it. So we'll have to wait and see. Again, love to know your thoughts down below. All right, if you could do me a favor, if you've watched my video and enjoyed my content, 
please at the very least just hit the like button down below it helps to get my video seen by other people it's good for the algorithm and all that if you liked it a little bit more then please go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon to get updates of when i bring out new videos and i do new videos every day all right friday afternoon i'm going to go and enjoy myself have a beer watch some tv nothing too crazy but that's my idea of fun all right stay safe be kind to one another good on you if you're on that game train at the moment well played and i'll see you next time